Why are you named Edie? Edie is the phonetic pronunciation of E-D-I. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. Welcome back to Mass Effect 2. Hill here, and we are on the bridge with Sundarius Shepard. And I'm just wanting to show you that we have scanned all of the planets in the Omega Nebula. As you can see, the Fathar system at 100%, the Amada system at 100%, the Caravamori at 100%, and Aaron Larkin at 100%, and with the Sahara Barak also at 100%, and the Battalia at 100%. So what this means is that we have gotten plenty of materials that we can do uh, upgrades with. So let's go ahead and exit. And I believe we have a new message here at the private terminal. Oh, more than one. Cerberus command request. Reports tell us that you've been operating in the Omega Nebula. We'd like you to look into a situation on Loric. Okay, this is a bit late. We've already done this. Okay, data, wait, operative data filed. Uh, this is from Edie. I have logged and begun decryption of the data you recovered from the Eclipse base on Loric. Preliminary searches show that the information pertains to illicit operations in which Cerberus was involved over the past five years. Should this information be released, it could severely hinder Cerberus' ability to operate openly in the galaxy. It will take me a year or more to completely decrypt this information. I'm a bit disappointed, Edie. Really? Someone of your resources, it would take a year? You're not dead from Emily Wong. That's the reporter that was on the Citadel in Mass Effect 1. You're alive? How come you broke whatever cover you've been under for two years but didn't offer an exclusive interview to your favorite reporter? Really? Whenever you come up for air and are ready to talk, let me know. A gift of words from the consort. Commander, I thought that my gift of words had been incorrect. An embarrassing notion. But my contacts tell me that you yet survive. I am pleased to hear that your journey continues, though I sense that you head toward an even deeper darkness. When you fought Saren, only your resolve was tested. But now I fear you cannot rely only on your own strength. Take whatever steps you must to ensure that those battling at your side fight with clear minds and glad hearts. What is this, a football pep talk or something? Anyway, be well, Consort Shiara. Take care of Garrus. Who is Nala Butler? My husband was one of the men serving on Garrus' team. Okay. I don't know how much Garrus talked to you about what happened. I don't know what the specifics... I don't know the specifics myself. Only that my husband died in a trap set by those bastard gangs. I know that Garrus blames himself. He took every shot fired at his squad as a failure on his part. And it was clear when he sent me the message about my husband that he thinks it was his fault. My husband would never have wanted that. He was proud of the work he did on Garrus' squad. He was taking back Omega from the gangs. He died fighting with honor. I miss him. God, I'd give anything to get him back. But whatever happened there wasn't Garrus' fault. You're his commander now. Please, if you can, help him stop blaming himself. And please, don't tell him that I sent you this. Thank you. Nala Butler. Alright. So, as it is customary with most 
great Bioware games, it's time to start talking again to the crew. We've knocked out some missions. We've recruited some new players here. Let's see if Jacob has anything to say. Commander, can I help you with something? Um... Yes, Normandy upgrades. Any thoughts on how to prepare against the Collectors? They spec this ship to the original Normandy, but you were there. The Collectors cut her like butter. This armor just isn't top of the line anymore. People will die if we don't upgrade. Alliance had some new toys in Secret Dev before I left. I could try and pull a few favors. Oh, really? Already? Heavy ship armor? Alright, we might as well go ahead. Heavy ship armor. Solaris armor, people. Alright, we now have Solaris armor installed on the Normandy. Okay, anything else, Jacob, you want to talk about? Commander, can I help you with something? I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. Sounds good. Have to say you run this ship tight, and we're getting things done. We keep on track and maybe we'll figure this out. I hope so. I'm not looking forward to the debrief if it all goes to hell. Is there <laughs> something specific? Or are you just checking in? I heard you were big in the Alliance. Figured we have something in common. I did some things that caught attention and stirred up the Citadel. That was after the Alliance put me on leave, though. Didn't drive a Mako through a relay or take down a Reaper, but you covered that. <laughs> what was your proudest career moment? The job I'm proudest of wasn't for the Alliance. Nobody really knows about it. A Batarian group was plotting to release a weaponized virus and kill the Council. Miranda and I stopped it. Hmm. Strange that it wasn't bigger news. The real work doesn't get publicized, you know that. They say it's better that people don't know how fragile the system is or how close the bad guys can get. So, it never happened. Like you and the Reaper. Tough. And that's why I'm here. Okay. Let's ask him about joining Cerberus. What led you to Cerberus? The Alliance sidelined me after Eden Prime. Ended up on a job with Miranda that Cerberus treated like an audition. And here I am. You don't seem like a results at all costs kind of guy. Cerberus history doesn't bother you? The Alliance is all politics. Somebody has to take down the bad people. Cerberus keeps that line, I'm on their side. You make no apologies for doing what you had to. I admire that. I couldn't go back to the Alliance, not after the cover-up. They did the same to you. General Public never knew you were dead or heard the real story of the Citadel. Did you know they used you on recruitment ads? You were the human ideal for like six months. Then they replaced you with a composite image they invented. Guess you didn't focus test right. You were actually the Alliance poster boy and they still dumped you. I don't like it. But I can see benefit in keeping some things from the public. Maybe. And Cerberus isn't exactly transparent, either. Where's an honest soldier go, Shepard? Right here? I guess so. Glad I'm not in your chair, though. Gonna be a rough ride. Hmm. I should get back to work. Good talking to you, Shepard. Okay. Oh, and we got Renegade and Paragon. Not happy about the Paragon, but... All right, uh, we need to go and talk to Miranda about some upgrades. I think it's that time. It's that time in the game where we can start upgrading. And this is still early, too. I mean, we, we are just really getting started. Okay. Miranda's office. Commander, what can I do for you? Normandy upgrades. Have you got any ideas for potential upgrades we could make? A few ideas, yeah. Here, take a look. Um... Is this under prototype? Because it's... Oh, no. A mineral scanner. All right, I think this will allow us to have more probes available. It's I'm not really seeing it say that. All right, we now have an advanced mineral scanner. Okay. Commander, what can I do for you? Let's talk. You have a minute, Miranda? Of course. I'm just finishing an operation report. 
I'm impressed, Shepard. So far, things have gone exceptionally well. As Cerberus operations go, this is one of the best I've been a part of. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not Cerberus. Maybe that's because this isn't a Cerberus operation. Not to you, maybe. But I report directly to the elusive man. And I'm here because he wants me to be. Cerberus gave you a second chance, Commander. Maybe you should do the same for us. Hmm, why should I? What did Cerberus do that made you so loyal? Hmm, I suppose you deserve to know. Do you remember when I told you how I was genetically altered? Well, that wasn't my choice. My father created me. He's a very influential man and extremely controlling. He didn't want a daughter. He wanted a dynasty. I ran away as soon as I was old and brave enough. I went to Cerberus because I knew they could protect me. Cerberus protection? You seem capable of defending yourself. Why did you need Cerberus? My father invested a great deal in his dynasty. It wasn't a matter of just leaving. I knew he would continue to pursue his... investments. Hmm. Cerberus appreciates you? I assume that Cerberus approves of your enhanced abilities? Of course. Cerberus fully endorses anything that advances the cause of humanity. Genetic alterations included. But unlike my father and his own selfish reasons, Cerberus and the elusive man believe in a greater good. They see the bigger picture, and I feel like I have a purpose here. Let's ask about Miranda's father. Who exactly is your father? A businessman, but a very wealthy one. It's ironic, my father believed deeply in a human positive agenda. He donated generously to Cerberus, before I joined them. That's how I first heard about Cerberus, through my father's connections. Let's comment on her self-esteem. You talk about yourself like you're just a tool to be used. By your father? By Cerberus? Maybe. I like to know where I fit in the world. It helps me find meaning in how I was created. You are who you are, Miranda. You don't need to make excuses for it. That's easy for you to say. We've both been engineered for greatness, Shepard. The difference is, you were great before we rebuilt you. I'm great because of it. Wow. Wow, that's kind of deep. All right. That's not what defines you, though. Your spirit and personality are what make you great. It's what makes anyone great. That's kind of you. I'm not sure I believe you, but thanks for saying it. Oh, okay. We got a little chink in Miranda's armor here with her confidence. Let's ask about her mother. You've told me a lot about your father. What happened to your mother? I never had one. Most of my genetic material is based on my father's tissue. His Y chromosome was altered with an amalgam of desired traits from various sources. How arrogant can you be? The man is completely egomaniacal. Just another reason I had to get away from him. Okay, I guess that's it. Because we the self-esteem has popped up again, but we've already talked about it. So, we're going to end the conversation. Thanks for your time, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Anytime, Commander. Mm, we got Paragon for that. Oh, well. You can't always be a renegade. Okay, let's uh, Rupert, check on Garrus. I think meal. he's back here. Seems like you put in more food and less ass. This is a new addition to the uh, Normandy SR2 that wasn't in the first game. Garrus? Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Sure, just checking the weapon systems. You can never be too careful. I thought I'd seen every weapon in the galaxy in our fight against Saren. Mercenary work showed me otherwise. And now Cerberus rebuilds the Normandy with a few upgrades to boot. I wish we'd joined up with them sooner. I'm glad you're happy here. I'm pleased to see that you're getting along with the new crew. They're as friendly to me as people from a group like Cerberus can be. And they've got you vouching for them. I can't exactly doubt your judgment. Not after I got my own squad killed. Hmm. Let's ask about his squad makeup. Tell me about your squad. There were 12 of us, including me. Former military operatives, CSEC agents, the usual. Had a Solarian explosives expert. Pretty sure he'd spent time in the special tasks group. My tech expert was a Batarian, believe it or not. Not the friendliest guy, but he could hack any system ever built. Let's ask about Garrus history. How'd you end up fighting mercenaries here on Omega? I trained to become a Spectre after the Normandy was destroyed, but it didn't work out. To 
too much politicking at the Citadel. Nobody was willing to take risks. Omega was filled with criminals nobody else could touch. And there was no red tape to slow me down. It was a perfect fit. People here needed someone to believe in. Someone to stand up to the local thugs. Let's ask about his squad activities. What did your Merc squad do? It didn't sound like you were available for hire. You saw Omega. It was full of thugs kicking the helpless. I formed my team to kick back. We weren't mercenaries. At least nobody was paying us. We made money by taking down slavers, pirates, or gangs that went too far. Gangs must have hated you. Doesn't sound like you made any friends with the gangs. I got three separate merc bands to work together to take me down. My manager at CSEC would be impressed. It was simple. We'd hit their shipments, disrupt activities, get under their skin, make them angry. They'd come charging right into our well-prepared kill zone, crossfire and snipers, clean and surgical. They never stood a chance. Hmm. Huh. You were a thug? I'm not, I'm not asking that. Okay, so what happened to you? How did those mercenary gangs take down your team? It was my own damn fault. One of my people betrayed me. A Turian named Sidonis. He drew me away just before the mercs attacked my squad. Then he disappeared. Everyone except me is dead because of him. And because I didn't see it coming. Give me the rundown. I'm not sure I understand. What happened exactly? Sidonis asked for my help on a job. When I got to the meeting point, nobody was there. By the time I got back to our hideout, the mercs had killed all but two of my squad. And they didn't last long. Maybe he was a casualty? Are you sure it was a betrayal? Maybe they took Sedona's out first? No. I put out feelers with some old contacts. He booked transport off Omega just before the attack. He also cleared out his private accounts before he left. He sold me out and ran. Have you found him? Do you know where Sedona's is now? No. His trail vanishes after he leaves Omega, but I'll keep hunting. I lost my whole team except for Sedona's. One day I'll find him and correct that. Thanks for coming by, Shepard. I've got some things to take care of. Yes, yeah, some calibrations, I'm sure. Okay, good. We got some renegade from that. Uh, who else do we need to talk to? I think we're going to go down to engineering. We didn't really uh, talk with them at length initially. And this is a good episode as any since we're talking to continue talking. The new armor reinforcements really threw off the gravimetric profiles. But engines are good to go. I rebalanced the Gilborn coefficients and adjusted the anterior intakes on the second tier stabilizers. Mm, sounds I love good. It when you talk dirty. Oh lord. What can we do for you, Commander? Uh, let's ask their feelings on Cerberus. What do you think about Cerberus? Actually, we don't know much about the organization other than the Normandy team. We know our mission and who's in charge. We're off to kick the collectors right in their daddy bags. That's enough for me. Daddy bags? Really? Uh, since he spoke last, let's ask about him joining Cerberus. How did you wind up with Cerberus, Ken? Once you were gone, the Alliance brass descended like vultures, tearing apart everything you'd said. I was very public with my defense for you. I didn't hold back. That's an understatement. If Kenneth wasn't such a talented engineer, they'd have court-martialed him for insubordination. Mm. But it got me noticed by the elusive man. He made an offer, and here I am. And let's ask about Gabby joining Cerberus. So why did you join, Gabby? Kenneth and I have been partners in crime since we graduated from Tech Academy. When he got the Cerberus offer, I insisted that it include me. He'd fall apart without me. Thanks, Mum. Also, I love engines, and the Normandy is state-of-the-art. When I got the opportunity to work on her, I had to jump. These two remind me of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Fitz and Simmons. Anyhow, let's ask about their training. Where did you receive your training? Both Gabby and I started in the Alliance, serving on the SSV Perugia. She flew in the first wave at the Battle of the Citadel. We saw Sovereign firsthand. But you left the Alliance. Why did you leave the Perugia? After you died, that weasel Udina backslid on the Reaper menace. Mm. 
They discounted Sovereign as an isolated threat, as a single- Which was bullshit. They said your warnings of a greater danger were mistaken or delusional. We lost respect for Alliance leadership. We need to fight the real enemy, and only Cerberus seemed to be doing that. Okay, well, I think we've asked all that we can. Let's go. Carry on. Will do, Commander. All right, let's go back up to the CIC. And I think we have collected enough Ezo so that I can go ahead and upgrade Morden's Omni tool. Oh, look, I can increase the Metagel capacity as well. Okay, we'll go ahead with that. What else? Assault rifle damage. We'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, so we have emergency shielding. All right, we can... Uh, let's go ahead with the uh, harmonics here. And what else have we got? Trauma module. Unity heals your squad to full health. Let's go ahead. See, fortunately, we did a lot of this uh, uh, mineral scanning on these planets, so I'm, I'm able to do this. And what about these prototypes? Okay, here we go. Morden Omni Tool. Let's go ahead and upgrade that. All right, I think we're good. We got all our defensive stuff. Um, yeah, we have plenty of our ir iridium, so let's go ahead and do the assault rifle damage. I think we're good. I don't know about this missile launcher and stuff. Do I even need this? Hmm. I mean, we have plenty of iridium, but we'll we'll come back to it. Okay, let's talk with Professor Solus. How can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Yes, would like that, actually. Talked about work earlier. Time with special tasks group studying genophage. It wasn't entirely honest. Lie of omission. Also, other kinds need to clear the air. Mission too important to keep secrets. Work on genophage was more than just study. <laughs> I expect... I suspected as much. I had a feeling you were holding something back. Apologies, classified information, but... You've earned the full story. Need to know me, what I can do, what I did. Wasn't... Lying completely. Initially just did recon, but uncovered data. Troubling. Krogan population was increasing at faster rate than expected. Krogan were adapting to genophage, overcoming disease. Perhaps they weren't adapting? Maybe they were just having a lucky year. Or fewer mercs left, meaning more Krogan were left to repopulate. Please, Shepard. Social environmental concerns accounted for. Not an undergraduate. Population spike caused by adaptation to genophage. No other possibility. How did it happen? Did the Krogan evolve? Or did some of their scientists develop a treatment? Krogan scientists? <laughs> Never met Krogan scientists worthy of term. No. Natural evolution. Krogan physiology incredibly durable. Organ redundancy, backup systems, cellular regeneration. Genophage like any other natural hazard. Krogan evolved past it. This is a major threat? No. Let's ask what happened next. What did your team do when it learned that the Krogan were overcoming the genophage? Personally led a science team. Geneticists, chemists, sociologists, mathematicians. Created new version of genophage. Released it onto Chanka, other Krogan-centric areas. Restabilized Krogan population. Hmm. Was this the best choice? You never considered other options? Hundreds. Thousands. Modified genophage offered best outcome. Stabilized population, avoided publicity that could incite Krogan anger, averted potential genocide or devastating war. Best solution for whole galaxy, Krogan included. Let's talk about the effects of modification. How did your genophage modification work? 
Krogan evolution attached garbage genetic code to genophage attack sites. Modification created other areas for garbage code to connect. Left sites clean, capable, running smoothly. Let's talk about the distribution of the virus. How did you distribute the modified genophage? Covert drops, hospitals, clan centers, water supplies. Very difficult. Few Solarians on Tuchanka. Team got caught a few times. Had to fight free. Messy. Better when things went as planned. I've got to ask, this was the best choice? You never considered other options? Oh, we got Hundreds, this already. Thousands. Okay, all right. Let's, Stabilized pop let's averted skip this, potential genocide skip or this. devastating war. Best solution for a whole galaxy. All right. Thank Krogan you included. for telling me. I doubt you've told many people about this, Morton. I appreciate you letting me know. Wanted you to know I'm willing to do what's necessary. Should get back to work. Talk more later. Next time, tissue synthesis has to compile. Good for free time. Okay, so... I think we talked to everyone we need to at the moment. Did I see... I uh, thought I saw something over here to read. Um... We can go up here since we're we're this is a talking episode, and we can talk more with Joker and Edie. But we'll get them back, Shepard. Commander. I assume everything is going well up here. I really want a chance to put the Normandy through her paces. I just have to trim up the drive output, and it'll be like we never lost her. Safety standards advise against manipulating drive settings while engines are powered and in use, Mr. Moreau. Commander, can we shut this thing off? I don't need it in my day-to-day. -day. If you don't want to hear it, turn the damn sound off. Well, it doesn't change anything. It's still watching. Like some creepy kid staring at the back of your head in comp side. You just want to punch him, but he's special and he sets fires or something. Okay, a little too far there, but you know what I mean. Your problem, not mine. <laughs> Thanks. I'll remember this. Let's talk about the good old days. Ever think about the old Normandy and the trouble we got up to? Yeah, those seem like the good old days now, but come on, it, it was hell at the time. Geth, Saren, Sovereign, and then we got dumped. We're stuck in a weird place, sure, but back then it wasn't all sunshine and bunnies. What about the old crew? What happened to the rest of the old crew? I heard most survived. Almost did. Presley didn't. The rest of us just sort of drifted apart. The Alliance didn't care. I don't think they liked all the non-humans in your crew. We were your team, Commander. With the Normandy destroyed and you gone, there wasn't much keeping us together. Okay, let's talk about the squad. What do you think about the people we're picking up? Well, about the ones you went out with last, I would never say anything against Miranda and expect to survive the reprisal. Jacob is way too nice a guy for the number of ways he knows how to kill people. It's just my opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading it around. <laughs> let's talk about the mission. So, how do you think we're doing? Well, the Normandy's not as ready as she could be. There's always more we could upgrade. And as for the crew, you'd have to ask a, a people person. Hmm. Right. That's it for now. See you, Commander. And Edie. Yes, Shepard. Yeah, let's talk about you. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located behind the medical bay. Why are you named Edie? ED is the phonetic pronunciation of EDI. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. Yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. <laughs> Let's discuss something else. Ready. What's this area of the ship? This is the bridge, where the navigator plots our FTL vectors, and the helmsman maneuvers the ship. Yeah, sitting right here, thanks. I'm just testing her, that's all. Let's ask about Cerberus. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Uh-oh. Do you have a specific inquiry? Did you see that, people? She just went red. Let's ask about the structure of Cerberus. How is Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus Cell, which is directed by Operator Lawson. Interesting. Let's ask about the resources of Cerberus. 
What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities? I have a block that prevents me from answering what? that question. Did you see that, people? She went red again. Let's ask about this block. What do you mean? Although I am less controlled than other AI, what? I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering your question by Cerberus's levels of secret classification. Wow, at least she's honest about lying. Uh, what else? Let's, uh, do we have Let's another topic? Let's discuss something else. Ready. I guess we've talked about her. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Your job. What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare suites in combat. My reaction time is much faster than any organic. I collate the records of shipboard monitoring devices for the elusive man. I serve additional yeah. functions which are restricted at what? this time. Are you seeing this, people? She keeps going red. Let's ask about these monitoring devices. The elusive man has monitoring devices on board? He has invested most of Cerberus's resources into the design and construction of this ship. He has an interest in monitoring our progress. Let's ask about cyber warfare. Cyber warfare means things like viruses, right? In close range ship to ship combat, I can sometimes break through the firewalls of an enemy's internal wireless network. Once I seize control of their systems, I can turn off gravity or air. I can disable weapons guidance or shields, or I can put their fusion plant in meltdown. On the defense, I manage Normandy's own suite of jammers, decoys, and internal firewalls. Uh, any additional functions? Restricted functions? Like what? I do not know. Uh oh. Some of my databases are sealed, some of my hardware is kept offline. I assume that when certain unknown conditions are met, those functions will be released to me. All right. Well, at least Edie is being honest. That's it. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. All right. Well, I think we have talked to just about everyone we can at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and conclude this episode, and we will continue with more Mass Effect 2. And this is Hill. And I'm out. <laughs>